Tonight, with four months to a major elections, we are going in search of the missing political party. So come with me as we attempt to look for them. We know that they're four months. There are a lot of them. The CPP, PNC, the PPP, APC, ETC. Well, ETC is not a party. It is etc. So, but the key question remains, where are they? Now, in the last few weeks, the political temperature, as you may know, has gone up a notch. But the space has mostly been taken by the governing MPP and opposition NDC, as has always been the case um, in our body politic. But we know that these parties still exist. They are on the books of the Electoral Commission. But what is happening to them? Where are the internal democratic processes to elect party executives, flag bearer, running mate, uh, and preparing for a major election such as we have upon us on uh, December 7th? Now, if you, if you uh, check, for example, the, um, what the, we know as far as the elections are concerned, they've been one of those key points that many look at is what they've been doing. Presidential, elect, presidential and parliamentary uh, elections upon us, um, have they elected their many internal executives? Recently, the PPP elected a new chairman, but who takes over the flag bearer position? Since it's obvious, some suggest that Dr. Parkwisi Indum won't be contesting that particular race. The same story for the other parties, really, the CPP, the PNC, and the ACP. We'll try and, um, try and get to that tonight. We've heard very little also about the next flag bearer, you know, for these political parties. But going in search for these missing parties, you want to stay with me tonight. A lot of them, their leaders are joining me. Uh, tonight as we discuss that particular uh, challenge with our body politic. But it's it's pretty strange. I don't know whether COVID has something to do with it. With four months ago, normally you would have seen some activity. But they've been absolutely silent. Even the PPP's internal elections that happened a short few uh, days back had gone totally unnoticed. Is it the fault of the media um, that we are not highlighting what they're doing or they simply undoing enough or anything at all will ask them themselves i'm pretty sure you're asking the same questions we're asking tonight where are they stay with me tonight after this break my guests will join me joining me right now uh, tonight is hassan ayariga is a founder of all people's um uh, Congress is the APC. Also joining me is Ivor Green Street. He is a 2016 flag bearer of the Convention People's Party. Uh, Paco Akon is a national secretary of the Progressive People's Party. Uh, he was, of course, recently part of the team that uh, have been elected to lead the, uh, the PPP. Ben and Mona is chairman of the People's National Convention. Uh, he also joins us. Uh, thank you all for joining me here on PM Express, Mr. Ivor Green Street. Let me start with you. How are you? I mean, it's been it's been um, it's been ages since I heard of you. How have you been? I've been well, my brother. Maybe in line with your the title of this episode, you could say I've I've been searching for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm well. I'm well, and uh, you know, uh, all is well in the party. We've been doing many things. Been very busy doing many things, but clearly. As you say, um, uh, not enough of them have caught the attention of the public domain. But and, that, that uh, is, that's well, one of the things I'm curious to interrogate about, whether it's, it's just the lack of media attention or nothing is happening. Stay with me. Let me bring in Mr. Hassan Ayariga. Mr. Hassan Ayariga, how are you too? I mean, um, you've been missing in action. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Yes, good evening, my brother. How are you? I'm doing great. I mean, you've been missing in action. Uh, Where have you been? Where have you been hiding? All. Not at all. I've been around. You remember the last time I called you and complained about the issue of 
media not giving political parties like the minority political party attention, mm -hmm. and rather giving the two major political parties. You remember, you quite remember that. I, I remember, uh, yes. Conversation between yes. you and I. Yes. Yeah, so I can't be missing in action at all. Not at all. Okay, I mean, so you okay. you well and alive. Yeah. Um, uh, Papa yeah. Kron of the National, uh, of the PPP, you were part of the executive that just came on board recently. Um, you have four months on election. I mean, why why did it take this late to shuffle the park as far as the leadership is concerned? Hi, Mr. Akon, can you hear me? <laughs> Let me let me bring in uh, Mr. Ben and Mona then as we get Mr. Hello, Conto. Guys. Yes, great. I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Let me bring in Mr. Mona. Uh, Mr. Mona can hear me. People's National Convention, PPP. Uh, Mr. Mona, as for you, I've seen quite a lot of you. Um, I've heard you particularly. I can hear you, Ivan. Yes, uh, stay with me, uh, Mr. Con. Let me bring in Mr. Ben and Mona quickly. Mr. Ben and Mona, I've heard of you. I've seen you around. I mean, particularly with the, uh, your objection to the voter registration exercise before it started. You've been very active on the ground campaigning against it, etc. Um, but I wonder whether where the party is currently with four months of an election. <laughs> Well, let me say that, as you are aware, I've, um, I'm not very well. I oblige and uh, serious um, pressures from you to speak. I'm not really very well. Uh, I'm grateful. I'm, hospitalized in that. I was really, I'm really grateful that, that you could join me. That's not said. The, the party is doing well. We have had very difficult challenges, um, including leadership challenge as to how we'll be able to drive forward all of that we have put to the back and we are determined to push the frontiers of our party because the party is bigger than the challenges that confront us okay the second important thing is what i would want to say hassan has already indicated that of your major or flagship programs on your programs it appears that this is the first time you are bringing us on board. And even that you have decided to categorize us outside of the two political parties that have ravaged this um, democracy in the Fourth Republic. These two political parties are responsible for the decadence that we find in our society and our body politic. And so therefore, your persistence and consistent call on these two political parties to feature on your major programs is partly responsible for the silence of our political party. Okay. I mean, that is a very interesting one that we would get into a bit more. But let me bring in Mr. Pakwa Kong. Pakwa Kong, you agree with that last point he makes, that it is largely because of the general lack of attention that people on this side of the fourth estate of the realm give political parties such as yourself, the minor parties, that is why PPP possibly haven't been heard much of. I, I totally agree with uh, Chairman Mona. Uh, it appears that um, we, we... Mr. Korn, we have a challenge with the, with the internet connection to you. And so we'll try and, try maybe, and rectify maybe, that. Maybe I have to get... We have been to cut off from the political also. discussion. Sometimes we are not engaged by the media and, and many of them... Um, let me, let me bring in, let's fix that. Let's fix that. I mean, let's get a stable connection to him. Let me bring in Mr. Ivor Greenstreet. Mr. Greenstreet, so the, I've heard your other colleagues. I wonder where you stand on that question. Are you also blaming the media for the lack of attention? Hello, Mr. Greenstreet. I think you've muted your... Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm okay now. Yes, yes, I can see that. Yeah. I, I think, yes, uh, what Bernard and Hassan are referring to uh, are perhaps symptoms of the, the structure of the political space that exists at the moment. Um, but yes, uh, the, these are the effects of, of that structure. And clearly that was evidenced even by uh, previous occasions when 
our parties had representation in parliament and they even had to choose whether to sit uh, either on the ND side, NDC side or the MPP side. Mm. So the media itself uh, has parts of, should I say, we can call it that disease. Uh, even when um, we are interviewed, uh, the media themselves are structured in such a way that they report our comments, mm. depending on who uh, is reporting it, uh, to, to suit uh, the positions of either of the major parties. So therefore, how we even address issues of national importance uh, is regularly even taken out of context. Uh, and we're either labeled, either you know, being with one side or the other. So I, I think there's a, a lot of uh, things we have to engage in, as you have particularly alluded to, in the next three months or so uh, prior to this election. Uh, since it appears that this period is going to be one where we're going to be engaged in a discourse of ideas and policies and programs, uh, then hopefully that space can be filled by the various positions that we have, which we feel are entirely different to those that are held uh, by the two major parties who over the last 25 years ago have not delivered sufficient results to the Ghanaian people based on the kind of wealth this nation naturally has. And we look forward to that opportunity uh, being given to us. And, and we hope in it being given to us, uh, we will also see uh, an improvement in our electoral fortunes. Uh, let me bring in Hassan Erega. Hassan Erega, nothing is given in politics. You must earn everything. Mr. Erega, so tell me, let's start with on that, on that point. For the APC, what specifically have you done with four months to go with a major election? That should make me want to be taking interest in your, in your party. Um, my brother, you see, we're not like the two other political parties who engage in insulting one another, and you are interested in their insults. Most of the media men are interested in the insults of NDC and MPP. The NDC and MPP are not telling us anything. They're not bringing on board any policy or programs that will benefit Ghanaians, rather than fighting each other on TV, on radio, every day. And that is what makes you guys happy. You are only interested in those two parties. And we say, look, I've been on the ground campaigning, farming, doing a whole lot of things around. And I invite your media houses. They come. They, they, they pick stories. You don't even hear. You don't see. Several have made so many press conferences talking about issues of security in this country, talking about issue of corruption in this country, talking about issue of unemployment in this country, and many other policies that the MPP is not doing right. The promise, the failed promises, on and on. Your, your representatives come, pick the story, and then I watch throughout, and then we don't hear anything. So we ask ourselves, what is the essence of inviting you people for a program to when you don't hear it? I don't know whether somebody is paying someone somewhere not to air our views on when we make policies or, or when we debate on policies and issues. We are not being heard. Now, we have been very busy. Even with COVID-19, for us, I would say it's a positive thing. It's a positive thing for us in our campaign because it gives us the opportunity now to meet one-on-one -on -one with people less than 100 sitting, which gives us the opportunity for the people to buy into our ideas and listen to the policies we have for them and the programs we have for them. We will not go and mount big rallies and bring people and lie to them. We give them the opportunity to access questions. We give them the opportunity to interview us. We give them the opportunity to listen to our policies and, and actually scrutinize the policies we have for Ghana. That is the best way of campaigning. Campaigning that the people will listen to you, not campaigning that we have enough money to come and buy you, do this, do A, do B. There will be a serious shock in 2020 election. Just keep watching. I mean, a, a shock. I believe you, you, I, when you say when you say a shock, you mean the APC will win elections? Let's let's wait and see. Is another shock is going to happen beside that of 2016? You know, since 2016 it was oh everybody believed John Muhammad was going to win the election. Mm. John Muhammad was going to retain his position. Then the shock came. John Muhammad lost to Nanado. Now John, Nanado believes he's going to win the next election. He thinks that we can do anything to win. That shock is coming. 2020, Ghanaians are going to have a new president. And I'm 100% sure Hassan Erega will be that new president. 
I mean, no doubt about that. Mr. Mr. Hassan Ayariga, so you, you, in in 2016, I you you did you contest in 2016 at all? No, I, I was disqualified in 2016. Yeah, so this is a part that was We're disqualified. Part this, of the is, this, is a, party. this is a part that was disqualified <laughs> in 2016. Because I was checking the list of contestants and you were not there. And yet you want us to take you seriously for 2016, yes. 20, 2020, that you win elections. What is difference? What, what difference does it make? It makes, it, it makes a huge difference. What is important? I mean, a serious how, political party will yes, not be disqualified. What is important? What is, what is, no, no, no. A serious political party was not disqualified. It was the bias of the electoral commission. That is why you find that that the, at the moment that same electoral commission is not there. If she did right things according to her constitutional mandate, I'm not. Sh I'm sure she would have been the electoral commission by now. And I said it in 2016 that she will never ever conduct another election again. And it has happened. It has come to pass. Okay. You should be asking me. Le Le so all I'm so saying is that, all I'm saying is that, whether we are disqualified in 2016 based on political bias or based on technical knockout, we are prepared for 2020. And Ghanaians are not happy with the current government, with the past government, and they are seriously not happy with happenings in our country. And they need a new crop of leaders. Not recycling of leaders. Yeah, but we but, don't want to recycle John Mahama. We don't want to recycle. Nana let, let me, we want new crop of leaders. Well, let me bring in um, Mr. Mona. Mr. Mona, you make the same point as well that the two parties have failed us. But here we have the PNC, and you admit that you had leadership squabbles that has made it impossible for you to get your act together when you have four months to a major election. For a party, and I'm putting this bluntly to you, for a party that wants to be taken seriously, you have four months on election, and leadership squabbles has made it impossible for you to have internal competitions for positions that will make you ready for an election. That clearly is of your own doing and nobody else's. I, I admit that our own internal challenges have been responsible for our not selecting a presidential candidate as of now, and probably getting you a running mate um, that will accompany the presidential candidate. Into but but the, you don't even have uh, new executives, do you? I mean, your executives are settled already. Um, um, as um, ABF Hussein will say, when they are shaving you, you just don't keep touching your hair, otherwise you will lose the 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 concentration of the barber. And so I, I would plead with you. What I'm saying is that if everything were not a leadership challenge, you will recall that somewhere 14 September 2019, we held a neck meeting in Kipkos in which we ruled out a timetable that would have led to the conclusion of all the um, various stages of our party internal elections. It took the leader of the party to scatter what we had planned, and therefore we could not put together. Unfortunate for us, when everything was almost put in place for us to set off, COVID-19 also came to stall the processes. Just as we are about to conclude that, here we are confronted with a national exercise that involved the registration um, of Ghanaian citizens all over again. And any serious political party will not sacrifice monitoring these processes to just doing your internal elections. Okay. Indeed, okay. after you have finished your internal elections, if the processes leading to the registrations are flawed and stolen, it means that you better not contest the elections. And so we have an eye on the registration as we talk now. What we have done is that in some areas where it is obvious that there is no contest amongst the political um, actors at the various constituencies, we have directed that the Electoral Commission should see to it that those persons are confirmed. Where we have contestation, and that will involve almost every delegate to be at a particular location, we have to hold on until after the new voters register is done with on the 5th of uh, August. 
That notwithstanding, there have been series of activities that we have embarked on. Which series of activities, I'm sure you have been following. For instance, if you go to the northern region, you notice that a number of constituency conferences have taken place. If you go to the Ashanti region, more than um, two thirds of the constituency conferences have been concluded. If you go to the Bono regions, I call them Bono regions because of the past uh, uh, nomenclature, we will see that we have few constituencies left. And so therefore we are embarking on an exercise that will ensure that soon after the registration exercise, we'll be able to um, speed up the processes. What should excite you now is the number of persons that, for instance, are interested in the various positions that are, are vacant for flag bearership contests, for instance, you have Samson Asaki, who has indicated his intentions, Reverend Ajay Debra, um, Emmanuel Anidoho, David Apasra, and, and um, um, what I, Emmanuel Ash, uh, Ashibu. All these persons have indicated their interest to become presidential candidates of the party. Is Edward Mahama, is Edward Mahama expressed an interest as well? Well, as you have heard me say on a couple of occasions, he has right to come and contest. He has not indicated that right. But personally, I have said that for the failed leadership that he has offered, I will be a stumbling block between him and victory. Okay. So uh, you are about getting your um, candidates in place um, for the elections, your flag bearer and your running mate. Do you have a date when this will, will be organized? Well, as I've said, most of the constituencies would conclude their constituency conferences, even as the registration exercise is going on. Mm -hmm. Immediately after that, a date for national delegates conference will be set up. We are thinking about how we go about this without bringing the over 4,000 delegates to one venue, because the COVID protocols will not be permitting us to do um, what I call the mass national delegates conference. And therefore, we may decide as it's been proposed, that we can decentralize the National Delegates Conference so that it can be done at regions, regions that are big like the Ashanti region. We could have two venues, mm. but all the events will take place at one um, uh, in one day so that we can conclude on the National Delegates Conference. And so it will largely be an election issue and nothing more. Okay. M Mr. Ivor Green Street, your story in the CPP is also similar. With four months to go, you still don't have a flag bearer running mate. Um, before we come to that, let's start from the basics. What about internal leadership? Is it something that is settled? Actually, we have gone very, very far. We have conducted elections in all 275 constituencies uh, nationwide. We have also conducted elections and changed so many regional executives in all the 16 region, regions nationwide. And those uh, elections are the current leadership person, Hadja, our National Congress to elect our, our national executives and flag bearer at the beginning of 2020. But there were some disputes over how some of those elections were conducted. We had um, a, a court process, uh, internal court process, which has now been resolved and dealt with by um, the establishment of a committee headed by the Council of Elders. Uh, nominations have therefore been opened for contesting of national positions in flag bearer, and a date has been set with the Electoral Commission for those uh, congresses. Um, uh, to take place at the regional level at all 16 regions simultaneously on the 15th of August next month. So uh, uh, that, that is exactly which we and had it not been for intervening um, uh, processes. I mean, but, but um, Mr. Green Street, well, I mean, but Mr. Green Street, slightly, uh, Mr. Green Street, because of COVID. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Green Street, seriously. Which serious political party is trying to find out how to hold its internal elections yeah. and get ex executives three, three months of a major election? No serious political party does that. You must agree with that. It's not true. Well, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I, th I think even um, uh, the National Democratic Congress has only recently just chosen their, their running mates. The NPP has yeah. only recently determined who their presidential candidate is. 
and, and, and other parties who, who are now coming together based on maybe some internal delays and the COVID. I think uh, once we, uh, as we do, and I'm sure the others have, clear programs and policies that they're going to roll out in the, in the remaining period. I mean, because of the challenge we're having with you. you look at previous uh -huh. elections that have been held over many years, you'll see that much can be done. I see. Oh, yeah. Mr. Mona, you disagree with the point about serious political parties would have done all this by now. Um, I'm sure that you recall that um, even in our own country, I wanted to take you to the Zambia where Michael Sata won elections. And I wanted to take you to Cote d'Ivoire. But I will limit you to Ghana when in 2000, and and 12 president mills died i mean how, how, can, how can you how can you bring place. up that example i mean that was I mean, a, an event that nobody could imagine and so obviously it necessitated that but you have um, not had that sort of calamity before you. i i am saying that so you 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 are you are concluding that you could imagine the event of COVID 19 and the consequences it has and ramifications it has had on political formation in our country. And so when we were protesting, for instance, the new voters register and its implication on smaller political parties and what we could move forward with, um, you would have seen that one of the reasons that I kept advancing is that political parties have their own timetable and that compiling a needless voters register will eat into our timetable and also the major resources that we have. You did not pay heed to it. So today, if you are talking about our inability to organize these things, then you should know that limited resources that, for instance, we could avail for our party internal organizations are now being used to monitor a national exercise. Mm. That is one. Two, the time for which we would have done our exercises and internal elections we also have to now curtail all in order that we participate fully in this national exercise that is ongoing. So you, you now understand the magnitude of the challenge that we have put forward before, which was not taken on board by the Electoral Commission for some um, perfidy. That not said, I'm saying that political parties elsewhere and in, many, and in our own country have demonstrated that given good package, given resources, you can win elections two to three yeah, but, months but, to the election. But, but, who, but, who, should give the, the but who should give you the resources? We, we are mobilizing, Evans. Yeah. You are part of what we are doing now. It's part of campaign resources that you have availed to us. Mm. You don't necessarily have to give me cash. Mm. I see. I mean, let me bring in Mr. Ivo Greens again. Uh, to, to more weightier matters. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but you know that I'm not feeling too good. So yes. Yeah. Sometimes I'm breaking, just permit me. Of course I do. Mr. Greenstreet. Actually, I'm disappointed that uh, Bernard did not list himself amongst those likely com to contest for the presidential slot of PNC. Yeah, I thought you were going to mention his name right at the end. Bernard. Bernard. Right, 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 right. right. Bernard, respond. We, we, Bernard, for respond. For a long time, we have been discussing this, and I was waiting to hear you and you, your name. You, you want history to repeat itself. From general secretary <laughs> to like you did. Bella uh -huh. respond, respond to that respond to that for me. Why didn't you put your name up? Um in our language they say that you cut your coat according to your cloth, right? Yes. And that every hand every hand will put to um um contain water that it can be able to carry. Ivo, you are my brother. You know that I do not have what it takes to run a presidential elections. Okay. And so I am happy that you know that I have qualities to be a presidential candidate and probably president of Ghana. Well, um, we'll think about it. Well, Mr. Greenstreet, you, you had the resources to run for president, and you did in 2016. And, 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 they, and they were all dissipated. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, cl cl and, clearly, and, and, clearly. You know, with, 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 little, with little to show for it at well, the end of the day. Clearly, so fortunately, you know. Clearly, it didn't make you a pauper. I can see you are still doing very well. I mean, financially, and so I mean that's that's good. My friend, you and, have and, 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 and so Ivo, you pocket. want you want that you <laughs> Ivo, you want that my little resources be dissipated. I, I thought you were a good brother. To your new your new enskinment. So all the money is going is going there. You are, you are, you are engaged <laughs> in multiple roles. I mean, uh, may, may, <laughs> may, Mr. Green Street, let me ask you this. I mean, talking about presidential ambitions. You 
run in 2016, right? Now, the results that the EC confirmed, you had 0.24%. Yes. I mean, I mean, for the CPP. Clearly, yes. Mr. Greenstreet, I put it to you that that sort of performance disqualifies you to, to be any party that people should really expect to have any resources to compete in this race because that is a total rejection by the people of Ghana. They don't, the people of Ghana don't see the CPP as a serious political party. Well, in, in the same way that the people of Ghana entirely rejected uh, the, the government of the NDC by over one million votes. Yeah, but, but they had 44%. At that election, that um, uh, uh, Nanado Dankwa, His Excellency uh, Akufuado, who had tried on a number of occasions to present himself to the people of Ghana, along with his party, successfully made a number of promises to people of Ghana who were so entirely frustrated and needed some hope and decided at that point in time to place their entire hope and confidence in those things that have been promised and the amounts of times that he had tried. Unfortunately, they've been entirely disappointed. So that we have a situation now where nobody wants the NPP to remain in office. At the same time, they don't want the NDC back. But they so want the CPP. Precisely the time they want the CPP. They will be looking to see what other parties have to offer, mm. what our policies and programs are, who can present them with a renewed direction and a new hope that presents opportunities to the entire people of this nation mm. after these severe disappointments. And therefore, it is incumbent upon parties like the Convention People's Party who have the kind of history, the capacity, the policies and the programs, and the men and women to deliver on these things, to offer itself despite difficult circumstances, yes, but still, it is a democracy. It is a multi-party democracy. It is not a two-party democracy. Are you, are you seriously are saying that, that, that we, run, we run a multi-party democracy? It's a two-party democracy, I put it to you. The re election results tell us that it's a two-party democracy. When your party is getting 0% <laughs> in election, PNC is getting same, and all the other parties, zero. I mean, the best you can get is 1%. It is a two-party democracy. Evans. At a, at a point I, in time... Evans, 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 Evans. Evans, are we coming? may I speak? Yes. Uh, not for me. Not coming. Just a second, gentlemen. Let me bring in Anofuri or Wusu may on the we, chair. May we come in? Yes, yes. But, uh, mm. Mr. Hassan Ayariga, I'll bring mm. you in shortly. Let me bring in Nanofuri or Wusu. He's the chairman of the PPP, and he's joined us. Earlier, we had Papa Kwa Kone, secretary, but we had a challenge with his line, so we invited him to join us. Yes, Anofuri, yes, you had a reaction to that question I asked. Uh, Evans, uh, the media has been most unfair to us. That's number one. Number two, if you want to see the activities of, say, the PPP, Google PPP. Google PPP. Google Nano Fore, Google Paco, Google Coficial, Google Divine Nkrumah, Google PPP. And you see the activities that we have been engaging. You have not been interested. You have not Thank been you. interested. The fact that well. Thank you. Been put, the fact that we have been put in this cluster, speaking on this platform, and you don't allow our space on your other platforms uh, until there's the, some activity or politics is coming in, you don't give us an opportunity to sound out our policies and what we want to do for Ghana. Then you turn around, and then you want to blame us, the victims, that we have not shown enough of an activity and goodwill to the people of Ghana is most unfortunate. Let me tell you, the PPP, in the 2016 election, mm. in two months to election, the EC goes ahead and disqualifies our presidential candidate. I was a parliamentary candidate in the Futu constituency. Mm -hmm. And the, the effect that it had on us, the catastrophic effect, that they had on the investments and the hard work that we are putting, you cannot imagine. I, 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 I should be on BP medication as a result of what was done to us, erroneously. Now, you know one day or two days in politics can make, can make everything. And I am- and Change everything. Change everything. Now I'm competing. Then all of a sudden, I am told that my flag bearer has been disqualified. Then my your, your, those two opponents there are doing dawn broadcast and saying that, oh, 
abuaze each and each na muaka no wewu. If you cut the head of an animal, the rest of the body is dead. And all the work that I had done in cultivating people from different sides of the divide is thrown away just like that. Then people have the audacity, the affronty to come and tell us that we did not perform well. Somebody ties both of your hands to go into a fight. <laughs> and then they beat you up. And then people say that, why did you allow them to beat you up? This is the same thing that you're doing now. You don't it's give happening us now. to speak. You don't give us the the, 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 when we make statements, you don't even read our statements and you don't talk about it. When we were against the voters register and we gave an alternative that the National Identification Authority should be used, then we quoted what the good Professor Atepa himself had said, that he can get the database out of the NIA. How much did you talk about it? He said that the NIA database is a dominant database. And you know in science, you can get the recessive out of the dominant, but you cannot get the dominant out of a recessive. And he says that with his dominant database, he could have extracted for us within five days the voters register. And we put these documents up, and we spoke about this, and we wrote about it, and we put press releases about it. How many times did you talk about it? Well, but, but I've, you said you I should Google. You said, you said I should Google. About. You said I should Google PPP. What you're saying, I see it on Google. The same media you are criticizing captured it. So what's, what's your issue there? Capturing in the no, I, I would say Google it to see our activity. Yeah, but if I but Google it, I will, I will only see I will only see results the because the media Ivan, covered it. Ivan, please, please give me give me a minute. No problem. In the capturing, what was the discourse on the capturing of those information? What was the continuous discourse? And you, as a, a media man and mm -hmm. communication, you understand that you must continuously and repetitiously state your, your, your position in order for people to understand and then bind that which you are trying to put across. And I am saying this to you because our position differs from those two people's positions. But people like to box us. And, and what was said earlier with, with, with uh, 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 my brother Ivor is that when we speak, you want to take what we say and you want, it, and you want to align it to those two existing parties. Instead of looking for the, 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 the essence of what the substance, the substance, the substance, and what the, is substance. the impact that mm. they can have on society. Even as I can boldly tell you that when you talk about separation of minister of justice from attorney general, that became what they call the special prosecutor. This thing was championed by the Progressive People's Party nonstop. When you talk about electing MMDCs, at the, at the local level, we're making them accountable to the people. We champion this thing so, nonstop. So, when we talk so, about so explain. education policy, mm -hmm. and our, our education policy says no child left behind, and somebody takes a free SHS component, then you throw away the comprehensive uh, uh, document that we have that from KG to SHS, a child should not be out of school. But, but, Mr. Usu, so, uh, but, but, here, but here's the question. Yeah, yeah, no, but here's so the question. That is why yeah, here's that the question. there is a selective perception from the media. Yeah. In but, but, the but, but, but here, but here, here of, here's, of, the key, here's the key question, though. You say you have all these brilliant ideas that you champion, and that maybe the MPP maybe took some and final and fine-tuned and, and implemented. If that is the case, you went to the people. Take the media out of it. You went to the people in an election. Why did the people give the MPP 53% and your party 1%? You see, this because statement, <laughs> this statement, you have just uh, neglected what I've just told you about my painful exactly. ordeal when I went through 2016. <laughs> you are, we are in the middle of a campaign. Then the referee comes in and the referee takes you out of the equation. Then you are in the courts for over one month. Then you win the case in court. Let, let me tell you, I won the case on a Friday. I went back to my constituency on a Saturday and on a Sunday. Then on Monday, we were back in the Supreme Court that they have, they, they have gone to appeal the decision again. Then you have to curtail your, 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 your uh, uh, activities again and come back to Accra to go to court, to go and, and, and fight the court. 
Do you think that human beings are cattle that they just sit there waiting for you? Everybody's uh, looking for them, grabbing them. And then you are absent for one month from the political space. People, do you think this is a joke? So, 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 so for you, so for you, the entire, the entire erroneous. political system. Your analysis needs to be reviewed. Okay. It is an erroneous analysis. Okay, let me. Because somebody was hands were tied behind their back. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Let okay. that be the focus of your discussion. Okay. And then make an analysis that with his hands tied behind his back, he was still able to get over 200,000 votes at the parliamentary level, over 114,000 votes at the presidential level, which means that if he was not, that was not done to him, you can do the multiplication by 10. And I that's see. what would I have. Let, let, me I have. Hassan, let me bring in Hassan. Let me bring in Hassan. Mr. Erger, I, 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 I hear you in the background agreeing with that view, but you were disqualified, and you, you, were, you didn't have an opportunity to successfully challenge that, which means that your disqualification was right, was justified. You didn't earn the position to be there. You didn't deserve to be there. So I wonder why you were championing and supporting that view, because you simply shouldn't be taken seriously when you've been disqualified and successfully so. I'm sure you were not following the media very well, and you did not listen to the argument then and probably did not go to court as we are complaining about because if you had followed all these happenings you have realized that i sent ec to court and won the case against the east so why weren't you part of the, of the list of people who contested in the 20th century i was give, we were we were we were second on the second notice were rejected again were disqualified again yes. saying that we had but that's on, my point on, you listen to the disqualification my point is that what was the disqualification about that two people endorse the APC at the same time endorse the PNC. And you should know where I am coming from. I am coming from the PNC. As a flag, former flag bearer of the PNC, out of the 432 applicants who endorse my phone, two out of it endorse APC, same time endorse Edward Mahama. And that was the reason for disqualification. When we corrected that, the EC now came and said that out of the two, 432 signatories that we have submitted, 190 does not co doesn't correspond and that the signature differ and it and i told her look signature is not a rubber stamp for you to say that it's a rubber stamp and it must be properly done okay me, 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 sorry, now, be, hold, because... on, hold on hold on yes hold on. i'm coming to that mm -hmm. i'm coming to that so you realize that it was not a technical knockout but right from the ec bias way of actually trying to take some political parties out now you ask Mr. Ginsburg, a question, and that if Ghanaians took him serious, how will he get 0 0.24 and want to be president? Have you been to classroom before? Have you had texts before that somebody who was the last person in your classroom became first in the next exam? Are you aware of that? Are yeah, you aware of that? That's possible. That somebody, yes. So it's also possible that today we can be last and then the next election we can win. You're talking about we not presenting ourselves very well. Look, ask me why. So up to now, the APC has not finished with their presidential uh, primary. We wrote to the EC severally, as we speak now, more than 10 letters. We have conducted our elections. We want them to come and endorse them. They are giving us excuses, one excuse after the other. But, what, how, us, oh, but, but, but sorry, but sorry how, do, how, how do you conduct the election before you invite the EC to endorse it? The EC should be conducting the elections because, for you. Because, because we are in COVID-19. And we have to agree those who have to go unopposed and those who have to be elected. So when we agree that on that matter, we then call the EC, look, we have finished with our executive election. We have agreed that number of these people will be will go unopposed and a few of them will be conducted. So come and supervise the election. As we speak now, we have written to the EC seven times. Personally, I have called Dean Mensah complaint about it. We would have had our elections even before Nana Akufado was acclaimed presidential candidate. So if you talk about four months to election and we haven't elected our flag bearers, what about Nana Akufado who was just made flag bearer two weeks ago? Mr. so your party, we, what, your party, do you, do you have, do you have, what we want you to do you have party about? executives? We have all the executives, if one. So who, who is your, who, I, who is your, who is your, who is your national chairman? 
Near David Nibi. Who, who is your general secretary? Modikaya. You see, you're not interested in the other things. And, and, and when, and when, and sorry, sorry, when, no, even, when, even, when, even, when did you, even, when, you when, were these, even, when were these, even, when were these, when were these, I'm just, I'm just curious, when were these executives elected? Even, you are curious because you are not interested. Uh, you remember I had to make a call to you. Yes. I had to make a call to you to say, Evans, you people are not treating us fairly. We are political parties with major policies of how to govern this country. Mm. We have great policies. You don't give us the opportunity, yet you want us to win elections. And then you come and blame us that we are not serious. Okay. When I mean we are serious, you don't take us serious. When we call you to come and cover our programs, you come and look at us and then take story and go away. I don't know whether there's somebody right behind who is manipulating the media in this country that certain political parties get the opportunity. Look, okay, so, let so, me be very honest with you. What okay. are you getting from the NDC and the MPP? What you get from the NDC and the MPP is fighting. They come and fight each other. They don't tell us anything. Okay, so so let, let, I want to take, I want to take, um, Mr. Uso, I'll come back to you shortly. Okay. Mr. Green Street and Mr. Mona, I'll come back to you shortly. I want to take a quick break. When I return, um, we've we've had the, the concerns about why they're not being taken seriously, but the serious matter is we have four months of major election. So will anything change in the way the parties are run by themselves? And what difference do they hope to make in this year's elections? So even if the media is not taking them seriously, the people of the country take them seriously. Stay with me. Mesa Ivo Green Street is the former uh, flag bearer of the uh, CPP. Uh, Hassan Ayariga is founder of All People's Con Congress. Uh, pa, uh, co uh, well, no, um, uh, Mr. Wusu is the chairman of the uh, PPP, who, of course, joined us to replace uh, Pa Kwa Kondana Ofori Owusu. And uh, Benan Mona is with the uh, PNC. Um, Mr. Ivo Green Street, um, so are you. Yes, I'd like to just uh, tag, tag a minor. A minor uh, point on to uh, our previous discussion, with your permission, without extending it uh, yeah. too far. Yeah, quickly. Uh, uh, to, to link it to the whole aspect of monetization of politics in this country, mm. as symbolized by the total abuse of discretion by that same institution that we are just referring to, the EC. Mm -hmm. Imagine that in 2012, to become a parliamentary candidate, the filing fee was a thousand Ghana cities. And therefore, if you are budgeting mm -hmm. for 2016 elections, you may expect that there may be a slight increase to of 100%, let's say to 2,000, or even 200% to 3,000. But without notice, three or four months to the election, the EC increased filing fees mm -hmm. for parliamentary candidates from a thousand Ghana cities to 10,000 Ghana cities without notice, mm -hmm. reflecting the aspect of monetization of politics. For the NDC and the NPP to come up with those sums of money, well, maybe they know how they go about doing this. Let me, let me ask you, Mr. Green Street. Who are yeah. fielding ordinary teachers yeah. and, and, let, and let me ask you, Mr. Green ordinary Street. ordinary people, farmers very, in rural areas, to come up with that kind of money. Yeah. It's, 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 it's very problematic. Let me ask you very quickly, Mr. Green Street. Are, are, you running again, are you running again for president of the ticket of the CPP this year? Uh, the nominations have been open, so or filing or closed by 31st of July. So you'll get to hear. Let's see whether you publish it on your media. And no, but so, so, so here's an opportunity. Pre I'm asking, I'm asking you, will before. you will you pick and will you submit? And, I, and I'm telling you that we will test your theory okay. about whether really you give us the space that we deserve. If by the close of filing on the 31st of July, whoever decides to contest uh, provide their names and put it forward. Let's see how much space yeah. Joint okay. decides to give it on Thank you. Platform. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see how all this plays out. We'll have this conversation again. Enjoy the rest of your evening.